Hi everyone, my name is Alba and today I'm going to show you how to solve a Lightning Web Components mini hack. But first, let me explain to you what mini hacks are. Mini hacks is a very popular area at Dreamforce and Trailblazer DX where you can go and sit down to complete a challenge. There are challenges for all levels and skills, and the one that we're going to try to solve today is a pro code one. So let's get into it. So this is the mini hack that we are going to solve today. While having plants at home is lovely and helps fight climate change, taking care of plants can sometimes be hard. That's why this repo contains an app that allows users to keep track of their plants and the care that they need in Salesforce. Let's become greener. And here comes your challenge. The list of species in the system can be long, and the user experience tip has suggested that you, our awesome developer, add an input that allows filtering them. Great. So uh, there is some pre-work that we need to complete. Uh, they tell me that I can use an OR of my choice, and I created already a developer edition OR. And then they told me that I can use either code builder or, v or VS code to deploy the code. I am going to use VS code because I have it already installed and for simplicity. So, uh, the instructions are create a folder with my name. I'm going to skip this because this instruction is really here because at mini hacks, we use a shared computer. Then, uh, clone the repo using the following command. Then open the cloned repo in VS Code and authorize an all of your choice using the CLI commands. So as you can see, the instructions are clear, but they don't give you every single thing, every single detail that you must know in order to do that. But if you need help, of course, you can um, ask for all our uh, experts that are going to be around in the area. So. Let's go to the terminal. And the first thing that I'm going to do is to go into my dev folder and I'm going to paste the command that I just copied. This is going to clone all uh, the files and metadata in my project. And now I need to open it in VS Code. One easy way to do that is by typing the code command followed by the name of the folder that you want to open in VS Code. Amazing. So this has opened the project. We can take a look at the readme. We can take a look at the lightning web components that are part of the project. And the first thing that we are going to do is to connect it to the developer or that I created. So I'm going to authorize with an or we're going to use an alias, which is going to be TDX mini hack. And then now uh, I'm being prompted to enter a username as a, and a password. Sorry, not this username, but we are going to use this one here. So this is our username and I'm also entering the password. And this way, the Salesforce CLI is going to connect to my OR so that everything that I do in Visual Studio Code in this concrete project is going to apply to my Salesforce organization. The next step is to run a script. This script is going to deploy the metadata to the org. It is going to um, create some sample data and assign a permission set to you. So you can uh, look at the different plants and species of the app. So uh, we're going to execute that in Visual Studio. For that, we can open the terminal with control and um, apostrophe, and then, or we can open it here in terminal, new terminal, right? And then we are going to uh, execute the script. So now my metadata is being deployed, as we can see in the terminal. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. It's going to take some time, but not much, don't worry. Now it's assigned the permission set and created the sample data. 
Amazing. So now I should be able to go into my OR and look for the app. The app is called Plants. Here it is. And we can go to the Species Explorer, which is the page that we are going to need to edit to add a filtering input. Right? So let's take a look at the instructions again. Now here we have the requirements. The business requirement says, when a user types a value on a filter input, the species list components will show those plants whose name or description contains the type value. There are two additional conditions. The species list component should only change when the user has typed at least three characters and the return species by filter value must be cached to implement page performance. This is how the page needs to look like with the filter input. Okay, and we can see it's maybe a little bit um, small, but here we can see the uh, input filter that we need to add. And here we have some rough steps. They are telling me that we can create that filter using the lightning input based component and that I can go to the documentation and check how it works. We can use to retrieve the species from the backend an already existing Apex method called get filter species. And we can invoke that Apex method passing the values that the user type on the lightning input. Okay. Ah, uh, fantastic. So let's do that. So the first thing that we need to do is go to the documentation of lightning input as explained in the instructions. And here we can see that the uh, first example is a text input field, which is exactly what we need. If we go to the HTML file, we can see that this is the code for that lightning input and that it is of type text. So we're going to copy this. I'm going to copy also the div with the SLDS classes because that provides normally a better user experience. And we're going to copy that into our project code. Where exactly? Where in the LWC folder there are two components, a species list and species type. So I'm going to open species list because something tells me that this is the one that we need to change. And exactly here we can see that we are iterating over the data return and using the other component to show each species into an individual type. So yeah, this is the component. And we are going to find the best place to add this um, lightning input. This is this is a grid, so probably we don't want to use to put the filter inside the grid. So what we can do is to add it right before it. So yeah, this is the lightning input component that we are going to use. And now we need to find a way to get the value that the user provided. I use it and use it in our uh, filter apex function, right? So uh, for that, we are going to continue checking the documentation. And if we go to the text advanced JavaScript file, we can see that there is a method that is showing exactly that. It is showing how to get the value that was typed and storing that into a property called text value. If you don't really uh, know that this example code is here, you can check like, the whole documentation for the component in the documentation tab. So I'm going to copy that. I don't know if I already did it. Yeah, and we're going to use that into our JavaScript file. Great. So this is the definition of the event handler, but of course we need a way to bind that event handler to the lightning input that we just defined. And the way to do that is by defining a property that binds an attribute, sorry, that binds the change event to the event handler that we just defined. Amazing. Again, if this is something that you don't know, you can check the whole documentation for the component and you're going to find all the explanations that I'm doing it 
um, now myself in this quick way to shorten the video length a little bit. Um, great. So something else. Here uh, we are um, storing the value that the user provided in this text value property. But first of all, we are not initializing the property. So we are going to do that. That's a best practice. And um, that way we are going to avoid um, unwanted errors because we have full control of all the uh, different uh, properties that shape the state of the component, right? And then we need to do something else, right? We need to uh, find a way to pass this property to the uh, second Apex method that the documentation of the challenge of the mini hack was suggesting. So let's check the mini hack again and see uh, what it says. It says that there is a species service Apex class in which we have a get filtered species method. So we're going to look for that in the code. I'm simply going to do this. Ah, yeah, there it is. It is on the species service class and it's called get filter species and it is expecting a search text parameter. So, uh, instead of using get species, we're going to use get filter species and it would work if I leave it this way, but I like changing the uh, references to the apex method, the names of those references for consistency. So we're going to do that. And now we need to pass the uh, value that we have in this property every time that the input changes to that apex method that is being invoked with this wire service. And to do that, we can take a look at the other documentation page that is provided in the mini hack. And it is this one. And we can see that if we want to pass a parameter to a method that is invoked with wire, we can do it this way. And if we take a look at, uh, uh, like a complete example here at the bottom. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, we can see that the format in which we need to indicate the uh, parameter is this one. So basically, this is the name of the parameter of the um, Apex class, class param. And this is the name of the JavaScript property that is storing that value. Why are we using here uh, this uh, symbol? Because this is the way that we have to tell the wire service that it needs to be reactive. It needs to react to changes in this property. And by the way, we are using the wire service. The wire service, every time that it brings new data, is going to try the cache first and you can also find information about that in this page and the way we are complying to one of the requirements of the challenge that was um, that those uh, filtered results needed to be cached in the response in the blog in the browser in the client so so yeah let's go ahead and let's uh, bind here the parameter. We said that here we need to use the name of the parameter in the same way that it is specified in the Apex class. And here we need to use dollar and the name of the property that we are defining here in JavaScript. Fantastic. So now I'm going to deploy the uh, source to the or. There are several ways to do that, but you know, using the a shortcut, the VS Code shortcut is super easy. And now we're going to our page and we're going to see if this worked. And yeah, it worked. We can see here that now a filter was added. And if I try to filter, it is working. Correct. We have most of the work done. But there was one more requirement which was, um, remember this should happen if the user wrote at least three characters. That way we're going to avoid redundant or very often invocations to the bucket, right? So how do we do that? 
easy. What we need to do is to check the event detail value length before storing it into the text value property. So let's do that. Here we are going to check if event.detail.value.length is bigger than 3. And only in that case we are going to store the value property. So let's deploy this to the org and check the result. I'm going to refresh and now if I type only three letters, the filter is not going to work, but if I type a fourth letter, then the filter is working. Well done, we finished! So I hope that you enjoyed this mini hack Please try it yourself and let me know if you find a different solution. Many different solutions can work. And I hope the most important thing, which is that you learned. Thank you very much and enjoy this series.